Well, the parts SM uh, is now outside, um, undercover. I haven't cut anything off of it yet, um, but I did go around the car yesterday and take out the last bits I could, except the fuel tank, which is a bit I need. Oh, you think I would have done that first, but anyway, I took some bits out of the car um, that I didn't want to go outside because the ramp is now taken up by the customer's car again. Now, some of the things I removed include an accelerator pedal, exciting stuff, and to be honest, I've just like everything. Like that's the trim that goes down the side of the driver's seat that the height control lever goes in. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to need that, but. That's too pretty to go in the bin, as is this speaker grill. I mean, come on. That's stainless steel, I think, as well. That will make a nice drinks mat or something, I don't know. But yeah, I'm not throwing anything away. If it's good enough to be on an SM, it's good enough to exist in my house. Yeah, many things in there. But really what I need to do long term is to move the SM, not the parts car, so I really should just scrap that because it's easier if there's only one. Um, yeah, I need to move this uh, to a different part of the workshop where it'll get a bit more room around it and I can actually work on it. Um, but before I do that, uh, that that'll probably happen in the next couple of weeks or so. Before I do that, I'm going to remove the bonnet um, in completely a different way to how I did it on the parts car. And I'm going to pull one of the rocker covers off because I want to know if the engine's seized or not. Seized or not. Seized or not. Slightly nervous about this. So unlike the parts car, instead of removing the three little bolts fixing the hinge to the aluminium bonnet, I've discovered I can actually just remove these bolts down here on the skull, which I'm hoping all come undone. They need to follow suit with every other fixing on an SM because every fixing so far, I, honestly, I could, I could count on two hands the number that have actually given me grief over everything I've done undone so far on this car and on the parts car, which isn't over there. I don't know why I pointed there. In theory, this should. Be loose now. Mm. Keep tripping over this. That is a, an SM rear quarter card, which came with some old seats I bought on eBay. Um, I have no use for it really, but I'm not sure why I bought it. Even the hinges are stainless. Three. I was just thinking to myself, what happens when I run out of bolt and there's only one of me here? Will the bonnet try and fall off? And then, I guess by magic, that's what happened. But it's all good because, you know, at least it's not delicate aluminium. Uh, this is going to be one of those situations where that bonnet props. Oh no, the bonnet props still connected. Damn it. I hadn't even thought of that. This is a classic case of not planning what you're doing. I'm getting excited and thinking, oh, I've got a couple of minutes. I might be able to do something on the car. And then not thinking things through. somehow. Right. So now that will just lift off. Got a problem. The broom's going to have to be sacrificial. It's going to be like when a U2 spy plane takes off and the little legs at the end of the wings fall over. That's going to go. I'm just going to try and pick this up from here. This is going to end badly. Ah! 
The broom wasn't sacrificial. No, oh, that went wrong. I genuinely cracked myself then because I thought I'd smashed my my lamp. Okay, right, so I need to perfect my uh, bonnet removal method. That doesn't work. Just gonna put these back here. Yeah, it's alright, I've smashed the bonnet up, but it's fine. I'll put the bolts back in the right place. <sighs> Do I look stressed? Obviously, if the bonnet was in good nick, like painted, I wouldn't have even attempted that. But there we go, look! 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 An engine. I have a bit of a plan. You see, I want to know if the engine's seized. Now normally to check that, you would put a, a spanner or ratchet or some kind of tool on the bottom pulley. We can't do that because the engine's in backwards. Because SM. Um, and even if it wasn't in backwards, it hasn't got a bottom pulley because it doesn't need one because everything runs off the back of the engine so the front is just metal so then what some people do is go in through the bell housing and use a pry bar and move the flywheel which i can't do because it's an automatic and it doesn't have the holes in the bellows and well, certainly not that i can see so i can't easily figure out a way to test to see whether the engine's seized well, not by conventional means but I've been suggested a, a little method which is not really advisable what is this oh it's like a heat shield clicked over the edge of the rocker covers that's interesting um, yeah, I've been advised that what I could do, if I take the cam covers off, if there's tension between the two cams on the chain, which is here, on this side, and on that side it's there, because that rocker cover does fit the other side, believe it or not. Well, it's not that unbelievable, is it? Um, yeah, if there's tension on this chain, that's a good sign. But then, what we can try and do is very, very gently rotate this. Only a tiny bit. Not, don't try and turn the whole engine over with it. Just This is the first bolts I'm undoing. Proper bolts. Not just silly bolts on a Maserati engine. Everything is pretty on this. Oh, the, ah, I was going to say the bolt won't come out, but maybe it's designed not to. Some of the bolts on the BX16 valve have got a little retaining washer on them to stop you losing them, and I think these are the same. Very thoughtful. Designed for a purpose. There's a throttle cable here, or a cable of some sort, possibly a choke cable, with a uh, turned up block with stud mounted to it. So none of this, just having some cheap clamp or something, pinching it. It's like, no, it has its own fixing. This is going to be in the way, that one. But is that going to make my life easier? It's this heat shield that's I don't want to, I don't want to break that. Oh, it's not actually. It just clips around the top of the can cover.
one intact heat shield. Lead lined or something. Right, here we go. Ninety degree engine, its head just so far down. I'm guessing that whatever that cable is, I'm probably supposed to get it out of the way even more than I have. Oh, I can see a time in chain. Jesus. Right. Oh, isn't that pretty? Look at that. Very pretty and out of focus. My timing chain has tension. This is good. This is good. It's, oily. <laughs> it's still oily. It's still oil in the top of the head. I think it's time to quit while I'm ahead. Because that's good news. Good news. Look at that. And that's uh, that's for the chain. So if the chain gets any slap in it, it hits that. That's barely worn. I'm looking forward to working on this engine. Can I put that back over at the moment? Okay, so the... <laughs> right, this will be the last thing i show you because just because it's the best thing I'm going to see today. So, here's your bolt, yeah? Flip it over, what is it? No, it's actually a nut. <laughs> and there's a stud on the head. Because having a stud come through here with nuts on, that would look rubbish like this. But that one's fine because that's covered by a bracket and that one, you can't see them. These need to be pretty. They can't be studs. Studs aren't pretty. It's got to be a bolt. God, I love this car. There we go. Good. Kind of. Potentially. Hello to you all, including all the new number 27 people who've come over. Um, I've got a couple of minutes spare at the end of the day, so what I'm going to do is uh, try and find out if the engine in the SM, the SM, uh, is completely ruined or not. Um, it's uh, perhaps a little optimistic to assume it might not be, but um, I don't actually know and I'm getting a bit nervous about it, and I keep thinking about it, and I want it to be good, but I don't know why this car came off the road. It's a non-runner. It hasn't run for, I don't know, decades, maybe, I don't know. Um, last guy who had it couldn't get it running, and uh, apparently he shouldn't have tried because of the valves and everything like that, which I'll go into another time, probably. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing at the moment Bearing in mind that I filmed the other day and found out that the cam chain on the right hand bank is still there and it is still in tension and it actually looks all quite nice inside there so that's good stuff. I'm going to go one further and I'm going to take off this side. I'm going to pull the spark plugs out so there's no compression. <laughs> Which is assuming there is compression um, already. And uh, yeah, then I'm going to do something that's I'm not really supposed to do, but um, I haven't really got many options at the moment. I'll pull the plugs out, and then I'm going to try and rotate the auxiliary shaft on the front of the engine, and see if the bottom end moves. Because basically, there's a theory that um, what might have happened is that the cam chain tensioners, of which there are many in this engine, and none of them are particularly long-lasting, they may be in the sump in bits and there may not be any tension on the chain. Um, also, I've got a mate with another one of these uh, and his engine is seized. So again, that could be the case with this one. I don't think it is, but I need to find out. So I'm going to start pulling off uh, just the airbox, this thing, plenum chamber. 
maybe in that manifold, I suppose. I noticed it's got the numbers on it. For it tells you what which piston, uh, which cylinder is which. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Why wouldn't it be? Um, oh, I've got a red battery light flashing. Right, I better crack on. So first off, spark plugs out and airbox off. So I've removed the airbox, um, which was here. And now I'm going to try and take the top of this plenum off, inlet manifold thing, off the top of the carbs. So we've got triple carbs, uh, triple Webers, D, C, N, Fs, I think. And they look very pretty and they sound very pretty uh, when they're running. Um, I'm not keeping them, of course, because they're carbs and it's not 1972 anymore. So I'm going to be figuring out some way of fitting fuel injection to this. But, oh, look at that. I was about to say, I don't know how easily this will all come apart, but um, I'll tell you what, you get so many fixings on this car and on the, the donor that look like they should never come apart again, and then they just come apart. See the sexiness revealed. It's still connected. Oh, I've got a breather. I've had a breather. Very nice. Oh, look at that. I think as you look at this and you think, oh, that's going to sound really good. But my plan uh, involves keeping downdraft style induction. So it should sound, I'll keep the same airbox and plenum and everything like that, and it should sound the same. I'm just putting the fixings back on so I know where they all go. Being careful not to drop them down the uh, carbs. Ooh, a bit of corrosion in there. Them carbs are going to be ruined. That's another reason why there's, there's a lot of money to be spent on them because they're going to be absolutely toast. I can see the corrosion on the one of the chew things, whatever it's called. I don't like carbs. I'm not gonna bother marking these leads up because what's the point? They're all gonna go anyway. So that was a breather that went into the bottom of the air intake. And there's some gnawing marks here by some sort of rodent. But I can now get to the spark plugs quite easily. Easier to get to them than it is on a Rover V8 on a TVR. So I'm thinking spark plugs out and then I'll maybe do this rocket cover as well. And then uh, an acid test. Not drugs, just engines. Right, so it's definitely the same day. Um, it definitely isn't the next day with a recharged camera battery. Definitely not. Um, so yeah, airbox is off. Plenum, what I th why I was thinking earlier on today that that was the inlet manifold, I don't know, a complete brain fart, but yeah, so the plenum cover is off, um, the plugs are out, and they're all laid out on the top there, lovely, uh, so I know which ones came out of which cylinder, just in case I need to do some kind of diagnostics. Uh, what I'm going to do now is remove the um, belts from the rack, they actually call that, because it is a rack of stuff. Uh, I'm going to remove the belts from the air conditioning compressor and from the alternator and from the hydraulic high pressure pump uh, because that's also adding loads. So once the plugs are out and that's out, there's the least amount of weight on that shaft that there's gonna be, um, assuming I haven't done something stupid like leave it in drive. And that in theory means I'm fit to try doing something you really shouldn't do you really shouldn't try and turn the engine by that shaft. But I'm not gonna try and rotate the engine. I'm just gonna, I just wanna see if it moves. If, if I turn that and the bottom moves, it's great. If it doesn't, just kind of expected, but um, yeah. So yeah, the first thing I've got to do is, it's gonna be an 11 mil bolt, isn't it? No, no it's not. It's made me look a mug there. It's not a 13 either. 12? 
There's a bit of rust on it. I think it was a 12. Right, prepared again. So if that's a 12, then by rights, this should be a 12. No, it's a 13. Of course it is. So this is just the, it's like the adjuster slider. So that's all we need on that. And cool. It's a bit rusty, that nut. Right, so that's that. Right, so I've just slackened off the alternator there, which means I can remove the belt, sort of, but not fully, because you have to remove that shaft to remove them completely. But the belt is off, and amazing, it's a weird looking belt, that. It's like the ribs are on the outside, and amazingly, it's not actually cracked. I bet that's better than the ones you can get these days. Now what about the aircon? Because I mean how does Well I say aircon, they both do the hydraulic pump because they both go around that pulley. But how would you How would you adjust that? Oh, do you just No oh, nice, okay. It looks to me like it's just bolted down one bolt in each corner. And you um you just pull the whole thing Move it to one side, it looks like it's on sliders. And once again, I haven't got the right tool. It's going to have a nut on the bottom. Oh, I don't know, actually. I mean, this pump's not going back in regardless. So you, I, I want to try and keep air con, because it's a, a good thing to have in a car, but this pump is the old piston type pump. Oh, there we go. Yeah, the whole thing moves. I mean, it's a bit... Yeah, it's a bit funny, but... There we go. A belt and a belt. It'd be funny if they're both the same belt. Oh, they're not far, right? Mine? Hmm. Is Ooh. <laughs> That aircon compressor doesn't sound happy. Oh, no, it doesn't sound too bad. And this pump, see, there's me saying I'm going to remove the belts to take the load off the hydraulic pump. The hydraulic pump is at the end of the shaft. Moron. Right, well, it's removed a bit of load, hasn't it? It's not really removed much. But so, can you tell I'm nervous? Can you tell I'm really, like, I don't want to do it? Um, right, so. HT leads out the way, spark plugs are out. I haven't taken the cam cover off on the passenger's, no, driver's side even, because it's left hooker. Um, I haven't taken that off because it's really grubby around there, and if I take that out, all the crap will fall in. Plus, yeah. If I take that off, all the, all the rubbish should get in there, and there's a few other things I've got to unship to get in there, so I'm not going to bother for the minute. Yeah, I, we're kind of putting this off, but yeah, we're kind of there, aren't we? Now, because I lose track about what I've filmed, and what I haven't filmed, and what I've said, and what I haven't said, uh, and what I did yesterday, um, I don't know if I've mentioned this already, I originally thought that because it was an automatic, there was no way of seeing the flywheel. Uh, you know, on a manual car, you'd have a couple of holes on the front of the bellows, and not really, you know, it might just be there as part of the casting, just to make it lighter. Uh, but yeah, there are a couple of holes, you could quite easily see what's going on. Well, I couldn't see any in the automatic bellows in, because the airbox was in the way, but now I've taken the airbox out, I can see there's a hole right here, and I can touch the torque converter. So what I'm gonna do is, I can't advertise, I'm gonna use this white, brush on writing corrective fluid to uh, mark the torque converter. I'm going to shine a light on it and then I'm going to point the camera at it. And when I point the camera at it, nothing will happen, but I'll go and get some Stilsons and I'll just, 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 just gently, just, just offer it the chance to move. And if it does, if that white mark moves, great news. The reason it's important is because 
again, I've lost track of what I've explained and what I haven't because I'm chaotic. But basically, on an SM engine, on the V6, the Maserati V6, the Maserati C114, because I found out what the name of it is, because it's written there, um, it uses three timing chains. Uh, the duplex chains are quite, quite fat ones, which is nice. Um, three of them. Most uh, overhead cam cars, most overhead cam V6s, um, would use, well, maybe two, possibly one. Uh, they kind of go from um, the crank up, round one camshaft, down again. And they might just have one chain doing that and another chain going up and doing the other bank. Um, they might go all the way around, down, back round, up again and down. You can't do that with this engine because the timing end of the engine, i.e. the other end, you can't get to. So they didn't bother doing that. Um, if you wanted to take the head off or something like that, you'd have to take the whole engine out. Which, to be fair, people might actually do, I don't know, but you wouldn't be able to do it very easily. So what they've done is the chains go between the cylinders on each side. So you have got a timing chain, it's on the front, but it's only little. And that timing chain goes from the crank up to the eccentric shaft in the middle. Kind of like where you would have the camshaft on a pushrod engine. A Rover V8 has a crankshaft and a camshaft above it with a sprocket and the chain goes around it. It's kind of that, that sort of thing. I'm going to sneeze. So the V6 in this car is kind of the same. It's got a chain around the crank, goes up, goes up to the uh, jack shaft, they call it, um, which is a shaft that drives this auxiliary shaft here, which runs the rack on the front. That auxiliary shaft, that jack shaft, sorry, has on it two more sprockets. One of the sprockets drives the head on this side, and one of them drives the head on that side. So you've got three cam chains. Each of these chains has a tensioner. These tensioners have a, well, they seem to have a habit of falling apart, especially the primary chain at the front. Uh, it's a nylon plastic, uh, almost like, looks like a cheese grater board, and it, there's a tooth, and like a ratchet. It's like a pawl on a ratchet, basically, and it, it sort of, as the tension, as the chain stretches, it brings the tooth up higher and higher, and the idea is it self-tensions. It, it, as the chain stretches slightly, it moves itself up and it keeps the chain at the right tension. But the reality is, the nylon wears away. The nylon wears away, the gripper slips, the chain goes loose, bash, 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 smash, money, money, money. Um, and it's been said to me already, people have suggested, people in SM world, not like that, and not the place in California, who, and I'd add this in as well, uh, Jerry Hathaway, um, big name in the SM world, that's the name of the company, it's not a... It's not, um, yeah, he died recently, um, which is really sad because I was hoping to send him a message and ask him his opinions because he was an American, he's an American who did the SMs, um, which is quite rare because in America, although they sold them over there, they didn't really tell them how to work on them and it's kind of, that's pretty sad. He did some pretty cool stuff. He, uh, You might have seen a dark red SM with like moon disc wheels and a big vent and um, and then a, a crazy SM trailer, transporter thing that it was driven up onto, and he built all that. He called that the rig. And that car with the moon disc wheels, um, I think he got a speed record at Bonneville, I, think, I guess it was Bonneville, salt flats, that you go over 200, 200 mile an hour in, with that car. I think it was a twin turbocharged. Still got the V6 in it, but it was twin turbocharged. So, yeah, I mean, he was, you know, he, he was getting on, but it's never a good time, is it? And it's a shame because the, the SM world has lost a character there. Um, you know, it's uh, it would have been nice to. Um, I should have just got on with it, really, shouldn't I? And said something, but um, yeah, it was quite quite sudden. Um, I know he looks after a few cars over there. He's he's probably his company is the go-to company, um, and you can tell he was an enthusiast as well. It wasn't uh, it wasn't just like he he hadn't he clearly hadn't lost the love. You know, you can be in a, if you're in that game, if you're in a certain game where you're working on certain cars and you dedicate your life to it almost, um, you can get a bit disenchanted after a while and a little bit, and you lose the love. And he never did. I mean, even right until up until recently, he's posting on. He's, he was on Facebook. He was quite prolific on there um, in the SM groups. Things he's forever posting artwork he's found and brochures and pictures and memories, and he's still going with it. Or he hadn't lost any of the the love. It seems. Um, so yeah, that's a real sad loss. Um, so we had Robert Oakron and Jerry Halfway this year, which is uh, rubbish.
basically. So, um, yeah. And now I've joined the SM rank, so that's three bad things to happen to the SM this year. Uh, right, anyway, so yes. So, oh yeah, the torque converter's there. He probably would have said, you don't want an automatic, they're rubbish. And I'd have said, well, I, that's very well, Jerry, but that's all I can afford. So, and that the people have always just converted to manual. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just pull a gearbox out my arse, shall I? And gear lever and all the bits that go with it. Why don't I convert it to euro at the same time? Does that work? Oh, it has. Okay, right. Oh, I've made my correction fluid dirty. Probably uh, predictable. Oh dear. Manky. Oh, do I need to mark it? Yeah, I'm going to mark it on the gearbox as well, on the bellows, and just to. It's not exact, it's just. Just a rough marker, which is just as well because I've painted it in the wrong place. So. Right, I'm going to move you, and you can see there, and then I'm going to do that, and then we'll see if I cry or not. Here's your hole down here, and inside, at the end of my finger, that's a white mark that I've put in with my correction fluid. Now, if I rotate the shaft just above it, that's going to move. I need to rotate the shaft clockwise as I look at it which I don't know what that is technically for the engine, but as I'm looking at it, it's clockwise. And hopefully, that will move as well. That will also move clockwise. Hang on. In theory, yeah. Yeah, that will move clockwise as well. Sorry, I've, I've lost my ability to think at the moment, so. And I can even see it on the screen from here, so I can watch. I don't need to some marks on here or someone's been at this before. Alright. Oh I can't see it now. Right, you can see the white mark. So in Dieu, that there, that's the white mark. That's on the torque converter, so that will move. It won't move at the same rate as this shaft, it will move at half the speed, but it's just got to move, so... Oh, I don't like doing this. Oh, it's chewing this up as well. All right. All right. All right, here we go. I can't see. I'm going to have to do... I was trying to look at the screen at the same time, but I can't, so... Right, feels quite good actually to move that. <gasps> yes! Is it down there? I'm guessing it went the same direction. Ooh, maybe not, maybe it went the other way. I don't care. Yes! Excuse me, will I go and streak in the yard? That's a really big deal. That's a really big deal. There's so many issues with cam chains and bottom ends and timing and valves and everything with these engines. And for the, for, to be able to turn it over on that shaft on the top there, as easily as that, because it wasn't that difficult. That's really good. I mean, it could still be broken, of course. It could still have blown head gasket. Uh, it might not be turning the cams this side. I might have just pushed the piston into a valve. Uh, the valves themselves might have broken. They might be inside the cylinders. Um, yeah, but probably not. I'm gonna... T bit risky. Don't count your chickens and all that, but it hasn't got coolant leak, it holds coolant at pressure, uh, more pressure than it's designed to, and the bottom end turns with the cams, so I think we've had a right over result there. I say we, it's not we, it's me, but 
Yeah, I think. Well, no, you're you're coming along for the journey, aren't you? So you can you can share in my delights. Um, so yeah, it might have a crappy automatic gearbox, and it might have the ugly lights, and it might be white, and it might only have three gears, but the engines are not seized. I mean, for that money, if you've got a, a semi-decent three-liter SM engine, it's worth every penny now. So. A C114 dot C114 dot 04 slash 2. Find out what uh, what engine that is. But yeah, that's um, that's awesome. Like a hot dog. So I'm going to knock it on the head for working on it now. Um, that'll be the end of this little bit. Um, the plan with the car is actually to move it uh, to another part of the workshop and give it its own dedicated bay because it's kind of taken up a bay at the moment only it's because the car is so big like normally I could put a car in this space that you could work on but you can't work on this one because it's so big it fills the bay so I uh, hopefully um, be able to move it over to another bay which I can get to which has got better lighting for filming and also for taking apart and that and then there's room around it so we can jack it up and start taking it apart bit by bit. I'm not gonna rush it. Um I'm in I'm in I'm I'm still finding my way around it. I've watched a lot of um the Cold War Motors channel, which people keep kindly recommending and, and I love that. I've I've followed that from day dot when he got it. When I saw an SM ragging it up a snowy hill. <laughs> like slipping and sliding and I was just look what am I watching normally SMs are all like shiny and gleaming in, in museums or at a show or something and there's one out in the snow <laughs> um, so yeah I've seen that and, and I followed that and I what he's done is what would have been nice to do but I think it's there's just too much to, to check on with this car um, it needs a fair bit of welding uh, it's gonna need obviously the engine will need overhauling Hopefully just not to the level that it might have done if it was seized or if the crank was knackered or the timing um, Chain had gone and it smashed or whatever then there'd be endless, you know I mean you can buy all the bits, but it's just cost a fortune. It would have really set it back um, Because of a lack of money basically to put into it, but if it turns over That's really good it means I can pull the engine apart and I can just check all the tolerances and you never know the crank the cams and everything it might be fine might just be a case of, you know, even refitting the original bearings on the crank. That's probably getting ahead of myself. But, um, yeah, it could just be a case of strip it down, clean it up, rebuild it. Um, I think, at the moment, the issue with it is going to be the gearbox. I think it's going to be transmission related. I, I think because we early on found out that there's no oil in the diff, uh, I think that there's something going on there. Um... Something caused this car to stop being used, um, but I will explore that more um, in one of the future vids, which will be trying to trace the history of this particular car. I'm not going to go into the history of the SM in America as a whole. Uh, I'll try that when I know enough about it, but at the moment I'm more interested in trying to find out what happened with this car, why this car has been off the road for what seems to be so many years, and how it's ended up here. Because um, it's just crazy. So yeah, wow. I'm I'm on to go to bed now. I don't think I'm going to top this. Only it's six o'clock in the evening, but I don't think my day can get better from that. So uh, yeah, cheers.